Okay, welcome to part um, this part, part one of this video series. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about the um, well socket connections, partly, and basically going to be creating the backend files and probably finishing the whole thing. To be honest, because it's not a very complicated system at all. Okay, so we're going to start with this. Well, okay, I'll explain briefly the file structure in case you haven't watched any of my other videos. Uh, basically, this is the root folder that we're working with, and we have this status.php file, which is just this page I have an open here in my browser, and in my text editor here. Um, inside this core folder, we have um, an, an init.inc.php file, which just stands for initialization or initialize. Basically, you include it in all your files, and it does anything that you want to do on all pages. In this case, we're only using it on this one page, but you get the idea. Um, basically what this does is include the files in this folder, which are like some backend library type files. Um, sometimes I call this inc and lib, um, is what I'm using this time. Um, I, For a large project there is a distinction between lib and inc, I have both of those folders. Inc are things specific to the project, and lib are things that are just sort of generic, sort of PHP libraries basically. Um, that's what we have in here. Basically, um, in this library folder we have this Minecraft server file um, and this is going to contain any functions for dealing with Minecraft servers. In this case it's just going to be a sort of simple function that checks if the given server is online or not. Okay, so we're going to do that first. Um, we're going to create this backend function. We've got the file here which at the moment is blank. So we're just going to um, create a new function and we're going to call it server online o line online like so and it's going to take two parameters the first is going to be the server and the second is going to be the port so just comment what this function does checks if the given server is online simple enough fairly obvious by the name but it's always sort of nice to comment it um, and what we're going to do now is attempt to open a connection to this server so we are going to use the fsoc open function fsoc open um, I'm not sure what the f stands for it might be file because you can treat the result as a file um, res resource but basically what it does is opens a connection to the given sort of server address um, and then you can like write things to it like I believe I've shown you before if you've watched any of my other videos um, I believe I've shown you this function when sending HTTP post data back to our server. That was part of the developer API series. So if you've watched that, then you should be familiar with it, with it and what it does. Um, but yeah, it's, it just opens a connection to a server. We're not actually going to be using the connection here. We're just going to be checking if the connection has been successfully created. So um, we need to pass five parameters to this function. The first one is the server address, which we have in the first variable passed into this function. So that's just server. And the second one is the port, which was just port. The, uh, the, the next one is a variable that is filled with a error number, which represents of the error condition. Which I'm just going to call that error no for error number. And then the one following that, we don't actually need this parameter, but because we need the one following it, um, we need to you can't sort of skip over it. Well, I think you can pass null, but we're going to just stick with this. This is a variable that um, is filled with a textual textual is that a word? A description in words <laughs> of what's gone wrong, basically. So this error number will represent the error, like connection failed for whatever reason, and this error str string will tell you why, sort of anyway. So after that is the timeout, which is quite important. Um, well, actually, I'll leave this out for now because I want to demonstrate why it's important. Anyway, so this function needs to return true if um, there are no errors, which means the server is online because a connection has been made, um, and false if not, so false if the server is offline. Um, the error no variable will be filled with zero because that, that means connection has succeeded um, and anything greater than zero if the connection has failed because all the error conditions have a value greater than zero um, so we're just going to return 
something, and what we're going to be returning is error no equals zero. So that'll return true um, because this condition will evaluate to true. That'll return true if error no is zero and false if not. Previously, I've used like this, which I've done just to make it a bit more clear. But that actually is sort of a pointless comparison. Um, so we're just going to go with that for this part, introducing a new sort of thing. Um, so you can do that; perfectly valid. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this function. Surprisingly simple. I did say that. Um, so now we are going to go move on to the init file which is going to be fairly standard as well. Um, first thing I'm going to do is define a path variable, which is going to be what we always use, dir name file. Just put that bracket the right, right way around, like so. And that will just get the full path to the current um, folder on the server like that this script is in. So I explained that before, so go back and watch my other videos if you don't understand that. Okay, so then we just need to include our library file. So include path variable slash minecraft server dot ink dot php okay so that's that included and then if we go to our status page and include this library file like so or slash init dot ink dot php and then if we reload our page you see we get an error because I have presumably spelled something wrong. Yeah, okay, that was stupid. Sorry. <laughs> um, it should be slash lib. There we go. Right, so now we have no errors, which means... Oh, by the way, this one error is just because we have no rows in the T body. So don't worry about that. Right. Um, so now we need to sort of you know, make the rows of the table and check the um, check the IP, I, the server IP addresses. So we're going to define a list of servers in this init file just above here in an array. We're going to call it servers. It's going to be equal to an array. Oops. And then inside that array, each element of this array, each each element of this servers array is going to represent a single server. Um, and each of those is going to be an array itself. Um, so in each of these, we're going to have the server IP address as the first parameter, first er element, and the server port as the second one, both as strings. So I'm just going to type out one, two, one, six, eight, ten, because that's my local Minecraft server, and the port is two five five six five, which is the default. And then I'm going to copy this, paste it there change this to that, which should be the same thing basically. For this one I'm going to do what I did before and just make up something that isn't a, well, that won't work, something that isn't, you know, isn't, a, isn't an IP address that's taken on my local network. And for this final one I'm going to make the port wrong, like so. So now I have this array of servers, which we can test by just doing servers here. If I reload this, you see we get this array of server information. If you this page source, it might make a bit more sense. You see we have this sort of array um, um, output, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and each of the elements is an array itself, and in that there are two elements, IP address and port, just as we defined. Um, was that in the screen? I don't know, but here it is anyway, IP address and port. Right, so... Um, what we need to do now is check each of those if it's online or not um, and this is where I'll demonstrate a problem that exists here so let's just check one server first let's check server um, 0, the first server, the one that is online so let's check, uh, well let's just output um, our dump and our function which was server online and we're going to pass in the servers array element 0 and element 0 which means the first element in the servers array and then that servers IP address and then the same thing 
server zero, whoops, zero, one. If we reload our page now, you see we get bool true because that server is online. If we change this to three, or yeah, three, reload this, you see we get connection refused because it's connecting to a server and an IP address that does exist and a port that is unused, so the connection just gets returned I refused. Obviously this error is something you're going to want to hide and that's one of the things I want to talk about. But before that let's just try the IP address that doesn't exist which I believe is 2. If I reload this, the page takes a very long time to load because PHP waits for a default of I think it's 5 seconds, maybe longer. Um, so obviously we want to lower this time out quite significantly because we don't want, like if we're checking a lot of servers and like half of them are offline, we don't want our page to take this long like multiplied lots of times to load. So what we're going to do is go back to our backend file and just set this final parameter to 0 0.2 or maybe 1, 0 0.1, so a tenth of a second which should be more than enough time to connect to any game server um, or like obviously you can experiment with this if you find that it's like a bit too low you can increase it slightly if we load this now, you see we immediately get connection timed out error. So that's made that a lot quicker. Um, and just to hide this error, we're going to set the value, uh, well, in the init file, we're going to set the error reporting level to zero by using the error reporting function. Oops, error. I have mentioned this function before. Oops, oh god, right there. Um, if you don't know what this does, go and watch my debugging series in the basics section. Um, and I'll explain error reporting there. And now we see that error basically gone. There is another way you can do this by using the at operator thing here, like so, and that would hide the error. However, the way PHP handles that is incredibly slow and you know it'll, it's bad, don't use it. But it's there as a sort of last resort option if you need to for any reason. Anyway, let's construct our status page. I'll do this very quickly because I'm starting to run out of time, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, in here we need to loop over the servers, so we need to for each loop, for each servers as server. So in inside this loop we now have the server basically, and inside here we're going to define this online variable as check, oh what was it called, server online, server online, server 0, server 1, because that will be the um, sort of address and port. Then we're going to close the PHP block and then open a new one. And then in here we're going to do some HTML, which is just going to be the table row, two TD tags. Uh, I'm just going to copy those like so. Um, and in this first one, we're just going to have the um, server address output, uh, as I, you saw in the demo. So we're going to echo server 0 colon which sort of is the standard notation for port and then server um, 1 and then in this one we are going to do a check of the online thing an output so in a nicer format do um, so echo use the ternary operator here on the online variable and then if it's if it is online I'm going to echo online if it's not, we're going to do offline, like so. And then just to make it sort of a green colour, if it's online or offline, in here we're going to add a class to this. Um, I've defined these up here in my style sheet, just changes the background colour. So class equals another PHP block. We'll do the same thing. If, no, we'll do the same thing. Echo, that's it. <laughs> online variable. If it is, we're going to echo the online class, and if it's not, the offline class. So if we go back to our page now and hit reload, you see we get what we started with, which is basically a list of online and offline servers. So that's how you can create a um, Minecraft server status page. Um, basically it's just this single function here. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching, and hopefully you found some of this useful. Um, I will do something a bit more extensive using sockets because they can be quite fun. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and join me in my next series.